Cassandra Goldie and Jennifer Westercott are with me. Welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. Can I just ask both of you, first of all, for your overall take of the budget, Cassandra? Oh, well, look, on the one hand, the government's definitely changed tack on a few fronts. Uh, finally, we've seen some work on the revenue side. We've always said that was a big problem. Um, and, of course, the increase to the Medicare levy, for example, to help to fund the NDIS, really, really welcome. Uh, the housing affordability package, um, it's, it's a great start, Lee. You know, we would have liked to see more, of course, uh, but the government has created the way to get more private investment into affordable housing um, and also to be able to uh, encourage people to be able to, uh, um, on the sort of, you know, on the um, uh, first homeowner scheme, question mark over that, um, but we've got a good start there. I must say we're particularly disappointed, though, that we've got another message of, Let's get tough on people on Social Security. Uh, so the zombie measures are gone. Very good. But here we have now trials for drug testing, uh, you know, another welfare crackdown, compliance, big savings there. Um, and the government seems to be wanting to say we're still tough on Social Security when we know that the big problem in Australia is jobs. Jobs, one job available for every 10 people trying to find work. And why has the government again gone down this path of saying we're just going to get tougher and tougher on you? Jennifer Westcott, what do you think? Look, I think it's, it's probably a good budget. I think it does lay the foundation for uh, stronger economic growth, stronger living standards. If I take the two things we would judge it by, does it get uh, spending in order? I think, you know, the 2% cap on spending is good. I am concerned that there are uh, still a big reliance on revenue measures and you wonder how sustainable that is. We've still got to do the work on not cost cutting, but redesigning the programs of spending so that they're actually getting better outcomes for people. We're still concerned about the rising debt. On the growing the economy side, the budget's much stronger. Government's commitment to the full tax plan, uh, the you know infrastructure projects, the apprenticeship initiative, uh, the kind of manufacturing uh, uh, works, you know advanced manufacturing uh, spending, the small business package. That's all good. I think my bottom line on this budget is that it is. It relies on some very, very heroic assumptions about growth and about revenue, uh, and business is going to have to do the heavy lifting on that. So we really need the parliament to get out of its gridlock and do everything it can to make business more competitive, because it's got to do all the work. In terms of competition, and that of course feeds through to Social Security, because as you point out, Cassandra, it's about jobs and creating jobs for people who want them. Um, for a long time, lots of groups, you both, um, from your sort of diverse backgrounds, have been calling for structural tax reform. Do you see anything in this budget that gives you heart on that front, Cassandra? Well, of course, we haven't seen the comprehensive housing tax reform that we wanted, negative gearing, the capital gains discount. There's a few little signs in there. Um, for example, no longer being able to claim for travel expenses uh, associated with an investment property. Well, little chink there. Uh, some uh, movement on capital gains um, you know, t discount for foreign owners. Now, query whether that was more about talking about foreign owners rather than doing something serious on CGT. So there are sort of some signs here, but we absolutely don't have that kind of the, the big engine room of tax reform. It's unfinished business, uh, but as I say, at least we do have some movement on the revenue side and that's really welcome. And I assume you'd agree, unfinished business. Oh, I think it is unfinished business. I think, I think the, the difference I have with Cassandra on, uh, on revenue is the best way to secure revenue is a growing economy and a more efficient tax system. And I think there are still tremendous inefficiencies. I think the government is just dealing, though, with the political reality of the Senate that it's got. I mean, the idea that you could get big tax reform through this Senate, I, I think, would be just tremendously optimistic. Let but me, it's unfinished business. Let me ask you, um, what about the bank levy? Yeah, look, I can understand the politics of this. I, I just can't understand the policy of it. I mean, we're basically saying um, we know why we're here, right? We're here because governments have spent more than they've earned. Uh, we've got to send it in gridlock. But we're basically saying, look, look, we can't sort it out. So we're going to put an, an, a double tax on our most successful businesses. So where does that end? Do we start, we go back to a mining tax again? Do we tax another part of the economy just... uh, that's doing well? I understand the politics of this. But we've got to remember, these five banks already pay $11 billion a year in taxation. They employ a lot of people. You know, there will be unintended consequences here and they'll pass through to shareholders. Uh, they'll pass through to the superannuation funds that are invested in these banks. This won't come without consequences. Out of time, unfortunately, so we'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much to Thanks both of you. Thank you very much.